One night, I want to say it was around two in the morning, one of my roommate, the phone rang and one of my roommates answered it and he yelled out, Harris, it's for you. And I picked up the phone and there was that unmistakable Hungarian accent, which I will not try and imitate, saying, Mr. Harris, there is a bug in your program and I need you to come and take a look at it. So I said, well, okay, I'm, you know, I'll be there in about 45 minutes. He said, 45 minutes, why is it 45 minutes? I said, well, you know, I'm out in Sachem Village and I don't have a car, I'm, I'll, I, I, I walk back and forth. He said, tell me where you are. So I told him the address and he said, I'll pick you up in five minutes. And the president of Dartmouth College drove out to, Ke drove out to Sachem Village in that, uh, in that memorable T-Bird with the license plate basic to pick up a by now very wide awake undergraduate to come and look at a bug in his computer program. I taught my first college class when I was 18 and I loved it and the love affair never uh, ceased at all. Uh, there is an excitement in getting people to learn how to think, there's an excitement in planting new ideas and in seeing new ideas jump out of people's heads. And there's a challenge of getting students to do better than they think they can do. When uh, my father was having his final interview with the Board of Trustees uh, about uh, whether he would be the next president, um, one of his absolutely firm demands was that he be allowed to continue teaching while he was president. And the res initial response from the board was, John, you can't possibly do that. It'll take too much time. The, the presidency has you know, too much responsibilities. And my father came back and said, now, if I had said I needed that amount of time for golf, what would your response have been? And they sat back and said, OK, John, you can teach. I think it says everything about Dartmouth College. Uh, the fact that somebody as brilliant as John Kemeny would have an interest in teaching undergraduate students, that, that's the basic essence of, of Dartmouth. I had a math teacher in my uh, junior year in high school who thought I had some math talent and said I really should consider Dartmouth because there was this guy who had come on the faculty, he came from Princeton, he was a genius, uh, his name was John Kemeny. And my parents brought me up here between my junior and uh, sophomore, uh, junior and senior years at high school. And I, the admissions office arranged for me to meet with Kemeny. And he and I sat on the steps at Dartmouth Hall. I still remember it today. Uh, and he talked for a half hour about his visions for the math department at Dartmouth. And I was just totally mesmerized. I mean, he made the sale right then and there. My father felt such a passion for reaching students that it was almost palpable. Uh, certainly there are a few incidents that stand out. Uh, oh, certainly May 1, 1964 at 4 a.m. and for the first time, Dartmouth Time Sharing, two people at two different terminals managed to solve a problem in BASIC. It was a huge breakthrough, which we all remember. The pioneering work he and the people working with him did to create the BASIC language, I think is something that not only that I, as a Dartmouth uh, graduate, am very proud of, uh, but I think it also uh, established Dartmouth as a leader in that field, which uh, you know, we continue to hold today. And Keywood, I think, has fostered here a, a sense of innovation, a sense of creativity, a sense of excitement. There were a number of years for which the Keywood building was a second home. Or maybe that was the first home and our house was the second home. It was never quite clear to us. And all of us used to wonder what went on in there. Uh, there was obviously something interesting happening in there. And, and the fact that it was a building that you couldn't easily look into uh, left us all suspicious that there must be something uh, quite special happening there. I remember a, a, a machine in the basement also that had early graphics. It had an early uh, CRT display and graphics. It didn't have a disc, but next to it there was a box of paper tapes and one of them was labeled Space War. So we started playing it and of course since all we had was the, the binary paper tape, we immediately decided that we needed to figure out how this thing worked. So 
We read, in, we read the tape into the time-sharing system and piece by piece, guys would take a little piece and try and figure out, okay, what's going on here? And we actually disassembled it and figured out how the program worked, at which point we started making modifications of our own to it. And I gotta say, we probably spent a lot of hours um, learning a lot about computers playing with these, uh, playing with these programs. First of all, there was this tremendous excitement as BASIC and time-sharing was being built. There were, there were these all-night sessions with Daddy and Tom Kurtz and these three crazy undergraduates and, you know, staying up with the pizzas and you could just sense the excitement in the air. It was absolutely crazy. Um, and then when it finally happened, there was, I mean, this is a dumb thing to, be, to, to focus on as a kid, but there was this whole basement full of boxes that did stuff and that my father had, you know, made do things and everyone, you know, there was press and everyone was so excited about it and you said, oh my God, you, you knew something really important had happened. If you're a leader, an innovator in the academic world as an institution, you attract the best faculty, you attract the best students because that's where they want to go. They want to go to the place that's on the cutting edge, they want to go to the place that has uh, that's known to be an innovator and that will expose them to the types of things that are going to carry through their lives and, and give them an edge uh, in whatever field they choose for the rest of their lives. I think as president, um, obviously a lot of very significant things happened while John was president. Co-education was certainly one of those significant developments. Uh, the D plan uh, obviously came about uh, at the same time because of uh, the move to co-education. It all was going to come down to the Board of Trustees voting on co-education. And my mother had a secret weapon, which were dinners at the President's house. I do know she invited the trustees over before the night before the votes, which was a tradition. They came in for dinner that first evening. And she cooked up her best stuff with the best wines. And then she sat herself between the guys who were on the borderline and she talked them up. I knew Jean Kemeny. Can I say a word about Jean Kemeny? The first time I met her I thought she was a student. <laughs> so I'll leave it at that. She was very energetic and very much a good companion for John. She had uh, she had an ability to remember and remind him of things so that he could be well prepared as he walked down the street. I happen to think he remembered them all by himself. She had a magic touch with people. Um, she, first of all, in complete contrast with my father, she had a photographic memory for faces and for facts about people. My father could not recognize a good friend walking down the street. This isn't absolutely true. And people used to think they were slighted by him when he couldn't, it's just that he didn't know who they were when he passed them on the sidewalk, which is why he never ever went anywhere without my mother because he had no idea who anyone was. They were a team on, on one sense in, in that domain. But more than that, my mother was his sounding board for every idea he had. He would no more go out with an idea without talking about with my mother than he'd go out, you know, without his underwear. It was just, it was, that was how he lived. But I remember feeling after meeting him that his approachability and his expressed desire to be approachable was genuine. And I took advantage of it a lot later on. And typically there would be three to five either individuals or small groups of students who wanted to talk to me. Mm -hmm. They varied all over the place from uh, a problem they were having. I remember the student who came in and said, Sir, I'm having all kinds of trouble with your administration. And I started them by saying, so am I. <laughs> About every five minutes was uh, coming up with a pun, a witticism, a dreadful a joke. I shouldn't say a dreadful joke. Often the jokes were really good, but there were so many of them. And he insisted that they all get recognized, good or bad. He was very funny. He was very dry. Sometimes you had to think about whether or not that was the intent. The humor was the intent because it would be delivered so dry 
I never rode in the T-Bird. I did see him in the T-Bird. And he did try to tell me once that he was the inspiration for the Beach Boy song, but I'm pretty sure that was a joke too. We had no idea that the damn basic license plate was going to become a scavenger item uh, uh, later on, and we'd have to go through so many of them. You know, I have two of them downstairs, and I hesitate to mention that for fear that my house is going to be broken into, but they still exist. But yes, we loved that car. This is an intangible, but while I can point to enormous changes in the last 34 years, Dartmouth is still very recognizably Dartmouth as it was when I first came here. And I used to say as president that the trick was to figure out what change was crucial to keep Dartmouth a first-rate institution without losing that special quality that made Dartmouth Dartmouth. In the business that I'm involved in today, innovation is really critical to everything that I do. Uh, I spent the, uh, the first 30 years of my business career basically in the venture capital industry, which is involved in financing innovation. And uh, it gave me a real front row seat at, at seeing people who were a little bit brighter than usual, uh, who worked a little bit harder than usual, uh, who had ideas that other people didn't think were good ideas, but they cared so much about that they pursued. An undergraduate education like, like a Dartmouth really prepares you to begin to think about these things. But I think what has changed is the numerous opportunities students have to do undergraduate research. And uh, I, think, I think that's where perhaps the undergraduate experience is different and certainly better than, than when I attended Dartmouth. Professor Kemeny gave me an incredible gift. I left Dartmouth a reasonably competent systems programmer, but more than that, as a result of participating in the research that was Dartmouth timesharing, I had the confidence to know that I could invent new things because I left Dartmouth already having done so. I think that's what education is all about. It's, it, it's basically learning that, that not everything in the world has been discovered and that not everything is known. And as an undergraduate, uh, part of what they teach you is the fact that there's still an awful lot to learn in life. The decision to participate, the decision to provide funding to assist in the building of Kemeny is very much an investment. And when you think of investments, you think about how they're going to grow and how they're going to yield. And in this case, of course, not back to the investor, but back to the community and the world. My family and I are, are just very proud to be part of uh, Kemeny Hall. Uh, I can't think of a, a better use of uh, philanthropic funds than to have a building, a mathematics building in particular at uh, Dartmouth, named for John Kemeny, who's one of my all-time heroes. The, the benefits that I think uh, naturally accrue in any organization when you have people working together and not dispersed in, in different locations to hopefully drive uh, new ideas. And particularly a project like this that honors a man who meant a lot to my life. What's the, the difference, what's the length of the interval between x sub j plus one and x sub j? And to honor him in, in a way that helps perpetuate the sort of work that I think he thought was important. When you needed him, when you wanted his participation in something, he was there without imposing his credentials or his reputation, without imposing his presidential status. And so when the college came to me to participate, I likened it to pulling a Kemeny and being responsive. And I think I used that phrase before, you pull a Kemeny. If they come and they ask you to participate in a way that you can, that you look for ways so to do it. This one, it would be terribly easy to reconstruct the original text. The only purpose of this is that you can use numerical transformations. I think what 
the Kameny Math Building means most to my family is that my father's legacy at Dartmouth will continue. But I must confess that I'd rather be connected with an institution that is moving forward where there is excitement, where there are new ideas, and where there is chaos, than to be connected with an institution that is stagnating. And the feeling that all of us are making an impact on the destiny of a great institution is an intoxicating sensation.